Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Astro Pill. Thanks for tuning in. We're playing more One Shot today. And right now we are on the balcony, that long, endless balcony, talking to Rue, the fox spirit. And uh, we're getting more about how this world works, what the soul of the world is all about. Uh, we're hearing more about it from her. And now we're asking about taming. Are we finally gonna get the explanation on this? Because I have just been bubbling with anger this entire time with the lack of explanation. So here we go. I have heard that word so many times. I only know it's complicated and that it has to do with robots, but for once, I wanna know what it really means, please. Holy crap. Do I need to choke someone for this? That's what I'm here for. Do you know what a robot is? Yeah, duh, what kind of question is that? No, I mean, do you know what a robot is? That really doesn't clarify anything if you just ask it and stress a different word in the sentence. That really doesn't help. Um... A robot is not a real person, is it? Right? It's a being whose entire existence is code. Inflexible programming with thoughts dictated by someone else's design. They can be copied, they can be mass-produced, then can be assigned all sorts of jobs. And most importantly... They will never confuse themselves with the living. They will always be bound by their code, the knowledge that they are a robot. But this was more of a limitation than anything else. Uh, that makes sense. You can't really build a robot to not follow its own code, can you? People have tried, but it's a recipe for disaster. In a way, that's what happened to the world machine. The code conflicts thing? Wait, the code conflicts. Oh, okay, not conflicts. The code conflicts thing? Yeah, but while you can't build a robot to not follow its code, you can establish a special bond with it. If the strength of that bond is strong enough, the robot's mental capacity will start to, de to develop outside of its programming. In a way, it's starting to believe itself as a real, invalid individual. It's a complete suspension of disbelief on your end, though. You have to fully embrace the robot as a genuine, living person, even knowing they are not. You need to spend a lot of time with it, treat it like a good friend, devoting your heart to the robot until it is able to return your feelings. <laughs> I make it sound so easy, don't I? But you and your, you and Astropil know better than anyone that it's not. Right now, the world machine is probably really, really scared. This content update involves some pretty deep code work. You're talking about the literal content update for the Solstice run, yeah? My creator was able to access some of the source code, you know. He did what he could and established new connections between maps. Those links enabled you to meet the other two. But as it turns out, the new code confused the world machine to such an extent that it's breaking down altogether. Even though the world machine always had self-destructive tendencies, it usually restrains itself when you are in the world. It doesn't want to take you along with it. All my creator wanted was to write a happy ending. Right now, the only hope of saving you is to take you through that ending. But now, the other two are gone. I don't even know how we're going to get you there. Oh my god, come on! We should go. Even this place is no longer safe. Oh boy, what are we supposed to do now? What's left to us? They're literally, like, physically blocking off- What the frick? Well, okay, of course they weren't actually gonna die, because if you don't see someone die on screen, they're not actually dead. Like, with- Okay, I don't know if it's pronounced maize or maize, uh, but I'm gonna say maize for now. Like a- like American! But, um, maize? We saw her die on screen, so she's actually dead. That's- that's just what it is. If you don't see them die on screen, they ain't actually dead. So Silver's also alive. They're all alive. Even when I broke the sun and ended the world, they're all actually still alive. No, we actually watched everything die. So, I don't know about that. <laughs> we watched the entire world fade away. Um... <gasps> you guys are... okay? Yup. When the factory started collapsing, I really thought we didn't have a chance. Fortunately, the robot assembly rooms were- were built pretty tough. And... It actually did not take me long to bring Proto back, because I'm like really smart and stuff, all thanks to Father's book. He had my he had made my design documents to be compatible with the assembly machines there. All I had to do was scan in the blueprints and reconfigure some machine settings. 
father really does think of everything. That he does. I'm just glad everyone is okay. Same! Samesies! We're ready to go now, Nico. Yay! Oh, look at this! We've got a little party! Woo! Yeah, totally fun during this terrible world ending, everybody's dying time. But we can, we can see the positivity and stuff, right? Oh, it's based on their colors, I'm guessing? I don't know what where Cedric would fit in. Oh, this is... No wonder he wanted us to all be here for this. Um, what are these things anyway? We, we stand on them real cool and uh, we activate some stuff. It recognizes who's on it and it's going to turn to a rainbow transformation sequence. We're all going to get mashed into one person. Yes. <laughs> Code portals. They temporarily remove us from the world. Oh, that doesn't sound like a good thing. Is it so that it lessens the anomalies and stuff? I, I don't know. I'm kind of scared if you guys are leaving. What? It's a bit hard to explain, but basically my father has a hidden decryp decryption key in our code with a .txt file as its shell. So I'm assuming we have to find something on the computer right now? But to get to that, but to get to them, we have to be removed from the world and decompiled. Okay, so they have like a .txt file hidden in them, and then you gotta like make them explode and disappear and not exist for a bit, and then we get it? Okay. When our keys are combined into a central uh, location, it will activate an encrypted part of this world, which will... Confused cat noises! <laughs> Confused cat noises! Um, Rue, maybe it's better if you explain. Yes, please! She's been the best one. She answers all the questions. I like it when she explains things to me. I'll attempt. Basically, these portals all represent a physical location on Astropel's machine. Oh, I totally understand what's going on now. And when we enter these portals, we will be sent to that location. Wherever that is. I'm sure Astropil's already pretty familiar with retrieving puzzle pieces from this world on their computer. But this time, Astropil would need to move around some things as well. Oh, that okay. All right. I, I'm ready. I'm ready for the challenge. Uh, specifically by moving the keys from the small portal to the big one. Okay. Moving from documents to, like, the the one-shot folder, I'm assuming? Question mark? Or, or, to my desktop. My desktop's a big portal, right? I don't know what happens next, though. I see. Does Astropil know where these, portal these portals lead, at least? You should probably ask Astropil on this. Right. Hold on. Hi. Uh, are you using this journal to communicate with me? Because you can, you can just talk to me without that. The journal's glowing again, Astro Pill. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay. You, you guys hang tight. Uh, let me, let me search my computer. Guess I'll have to block off the screen for a sec, but I'm here. Keep me company, you guys, while I'm, while I'm looking for this. Um, okay. Document.oneshot.txt. No, uh, that's not it. That is an old file. Okay, but she says that it's glowing. So maybe we open, uh, the Clover EXE. Let's take a look. I'm excited for this, you guys. I'm excited. Okay. Let's see. There's the the clover one. Ooh, big portal. Oh, there's like three portals on here. Here, I, I want to show this. I want to show this at least. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe I can uh, finagle some things around on my screen so that you can you can see this. Okay. I'm going to show you. So we've got all this going on. Um... The portal one, portal two, portal three. So the the stuff will appear in here once they're gone. So I'm gonna open this clover real quick. It's probably not gonna do anything. Okay, great, awesome. So I'm gonna keep that on the side. Uh, this readme is just the rules. Okay. Huh. So I I'm assuming I have to make them go away first. This one is red. This one would be meant for me then. Okay, we gotta place them first. <laughs> we just placed a little fox there. This one is blue. That one's mine, then. How come you're green? Because uh, of your eyes? Sorry, it also might be because, um, I've, I've mentioned this a few times, but I have flux on, which makes it so that it sh uh, shifts the colors to kind of night mode, basically. So everything looks very red and orange, so it kind of changes the colors a bit. So this looks very teal to me right now. This one is green. This one is configured to my code, I think. Why y'all gotta say it all fancy like that, Cedric? Okay. Uh, hello. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Salutations! <laughs> he won't even date me with a response! Okay. So I'm gonna open 
the portals. Okay. Uh, sorry, I have to keep doing random editing. Don't, don't worry about that. Okay. So, ooh, hi, proto.png. <gasps> what the heck? How come when I open it, <gasps> nothing shows up? Oh, hi. Okay, it's just taking a while to load. That was all. That was scary. I thought that was like something weird. Okay, so here's one of the keys. Ooh. Oh, cool. We get to see their little turnaround. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of here real quick. Okay. Let's take a look at their little things real quick. There's Cedric, and there's his turnaround. Cool. Move this key out of here. Okay, and then... <laughs> You're so cute! Oh, look at her! She's so cute! <laughs> I love her! Okay, cool! And here's that key. Great. So, we just move all these keys to the big portal. Ooh, it made a noise. I don't know if that was just the music or if it actually made a noise, but... Oh! 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 Oh dear! Oh dear! Where are they go? I mean, they got temporarily temporarily removed, but I am scared. Hello? Oh my gosh. What's happening? <gasps> Whoa. Hey, there's the big goggles that they mentioned. So this this must be where the author used to hang out. And um, I didn't really talk about it before, but when Silver was looking through like uh, the surveillance stuff, you know, she was freaked out. She's like, oh, it's all these views of everywhere in the Barrens, um, but I haven't seen any cameras anywhere. It's just because, you know, it's the, from the creator's point of view. So it makes sense. Hi, guys. Oh, you're back. That was quite pecu peculiar. I'll say. <laughs> Proto just has nothing to say. Hey, this is your father's room, right? It looks like it. The world machine. Oh. This, this this series of screens is the world machine? The entity is here? He is composed of a bunch of screens? Well, I mean, he is one program, I guess, so he could probably jump through the screens. I don't know what's going on, dude. A box filled with fo folders and loose paper. Is the, is the world machine, can he be a physical person? I don't think he has a physical form, right? Okay, notebooks and sketchbooks, cool. Black clovers in a glass case. I wonder what's what his obsession with black clovers is all about. Uh, let's see. A big detailed drawing of a machine with lots of TV screens. That's called a blueprint, Nico. Uh, don't try to school me. I know what I'm talking about. So that's what a blueprint is. Aw, Nico's so excited to learn. <laughs> that's sweet. It's a shelf full of books. Mm. It's a big photo. Wait, no, it's a painting. Ooh, they must have rendered it super realistically. Hard to tell at first. Okay. Uh, I don't want to talk to y'all yet. I kind of want to look around the room. It's a stack of books. That's a nice table. There's a glass tea set on the table. Tea does sound really nice right now. Too bad there's no water in here. Well, you can talk to that pill guy. He's got some water. He's got water for days. Is this a dying plant? A co oh, it's a coat rack. A coat rack with a scarf and a big jacket. This sure sounds like what the author was wearing to, uh, the, to the description of other, according to the description of other people. It's a piece of amber on a string. Looks just like that necklace that robot lady robot lady showed me. Interesting. It's a shelf full of books and another painting thingy. A bulletin board with lots of papers on it. Photos too. All right, let's talk to the remaining two. Wait, oh, I haven't even looked at the big old desk yet. It's a pilot's helmet. They're watercolor sticks. It's a big book on the table. It's huge. Way bigger, like five times the size of me. Just look at that. Okay. Hi there. This is my father's study. It feels like he's still here, doesn't it? Where is he? Is he dead? Is he was he gone? What happened? Where is he? Yeah. Where is he? The room ahead doesn't really lead anywhere, but Astropel should still remember what to do here. Okay. Ah, yes. I do quite remember I do remember what to do here. Uh okay. All right, showing my desktop in a second. Sorry, I had to close a window just now. Okay, here we go. So I'm closing it and gonna reopen the game. Okay. Ah, I full screened it, hold on. There we go. Just gonna wait for the Steam thing to go away. Please leave, thank you. Okay. All right, hi, Nico. <gasps> huh? 
So why did we have to cl Whoa! Are we inside the world machine right now? It looks like the perspective is a bit different. She's kind of sitting on top of... I don't know what the perspective is that we're looking at right now. Is it gonna be like a platformer? What's going on? Where are we? What the hell? It feels like the perspective changed. I can't quite tell yet. So it's like a surveillance thing. Um, there seems to be a figure in each one. I, is that Nico? Is it uh, us moving along the world? Look, I can't like move up. And her walking animation looks a bit different. I think we changed to a side scroller. What the heck? Wait. What is going on? Yeah, I think I think that is us from all the different areas. Oh man, I'm I'm not going in an endless loop, right? I'm actually progressing. Hmm, I might be going in an endless loop. I no items. Oh, I don't have any items. Uh, is there a certain way I have to go? Uh. Oh, okay, no, I guess I was just- I was just going through multiple screens. Okay. This is freaking me out. We're in a different dimension. Did we just go in a fireplace? Oh my god, here we go. Let's keep going. <gasps> it's a reflection of us? Don't be scared. Don't be scared. You're fine. You're fine. It's you. It's you. But you might be- you should be a bit worried about the squares behind you, I think. They- they came after you real fast. What? What? Oh my god. What? Why is it? Ch <gasps> Did the reflect ch reflection change expression without Nico changing expression? Wow, it's talking to her. Okay. Nico. Ah! Relax. I'm just borrowing your reflection to talk to you. Who is this? Who is it? It's not. It's not like my physical form is good for that. Ah! Jeez, you scared the crap out of me. Why did you come here? Can't you see? The disruption. The squares. They're closing in! Nico, please, get out of here! Is this the world machine? It must be. Let me meet my end in peace! Yeah, because the, the world machine just wanted to, to end. It just wanted to die. That was what it wanted. The squares are blocking my way too, you know. Oh, I... I'm sorry, I... It's alright. No living being should be in this place, Nico. Is this... The tower? Part of it. This is the center of the engine. Inside my head, so to speak. So this is... the center of the world machine? You... know my original name. How? Rue, Cedric, Prototype. They all... told me bits and pieces. I'm not even sure if I understand a lot of the stuff they said, but... I know what you're supposed to be. I know why you had to be built. And... I know why I'm here. They told you? When? Wait, you don't know about that? But I thought you were the world. Aren't you supposed to see everything? No, all this was outside of the protocol. This session was never supposed to happen the way it did. The story wasn't written into my protocol at all. Oh, right. Root told me something about how your creator had to alter the code. I think it was to connect some areas together so that we can meet. My creator, yes. Astropill listened to my creator. They were all working beyond my scope of influence. Back at the mines, I remember. Astropill did something to find a hidden map. I did not even recognize it. I couldn't see anything there. I just knew what you were feeling. You were really upset. Something happened in there to make you upset. After that, I... I panicked. That was when the cave-in happened. I... I remember the structure collapsing. I thought you got hurt. I... In that moment, I really thought I was shutting myself down for good. I really am a flawed machine, aren't I? What kind of machine would go against the wishes of its own creator? What kind of machine would... I'm... The squares. Rue told me it was your own code going bad. But that's not really your fault, is it? 
Yes, it was! At first, it was intentional. During testing, long before he realized I was self-aware, I would rearrange specific parts of the code, jumbling up bits and pieces of the landscape. Blocking passages, collapsing catwalks. Okay, we're getting an explanation about why there were anomalies in the first place, even though they weren't intended. Okay. Though they were very localized, it caused my creator a great deal of frustration. Forcing him to exit and restart testing again and again. Why would you do that? I got curious. I just thought he would figure it out eventually. But before he knew how to fix it, the world's NPCs, the characters, some of them got too close and... It spiraled out of control after that. I couldn't contain it at all. My panic only made it worse. Eventually, any character who gained the knowledge of who I am, their code, my code, couldn't handle it. Previous iterations of the world had more people, you know. And I almost endangered my creator, too. I... I was... I was so scared, Nico. I know you're upset because you don't want to put living people in danger. Living people like me. In the beginning, I tried to fight it, but my core programming made me summon you here. I tried to send you back home at the tower, but it did not work. Then I wanted you to break the sun. I thought that would have worked, but... Oh, I had no way to be sure. But Astro Pill brought you back anyway. Nico, all I want is for you to wake up back in your world. But I don't think I can make it happen. But I know I can't go back home without saving the world for real. Which means... We have to fix the root of the problem. We have to fix you. But that's... I know the original ending your creator put in was a happy one. Do you remember what it's supposed to be? It's far too late for that. That part of my code is so has long been corrupted. That's okay. I would still like to know. All right. You were supposed to place the sun at the summit. And then... Credits would scroll. Credits? And then you would return to the room you woke up in. That's where you would have been able to leave. And why is it that you can't do it now? Nico, the code's gone, remember? Shattering the sun was only supposed to be a workaround. I don't even remember the original code enough to describe it. But at the same time, it... Oh, I don't know. Oh man, let's continue talking to this world machine in the next episode. Oh man, it's one of those kinds of situations where like... Well, I don't know, it never really felt like they were the super worst bad guy, you know? I, d I never knew how to denote them, but it never really felt like there was really a true villain in all of this. So this is pretty heartbreaking. <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm very bummed out, but I'm also very intrigued. Um, it kind of feels like we're drawing to a close. I don't know what more could, you know, there could be to this adventure. We've, we've made contact with the entity and, you know, we're trying to see eye to eye with them, trying to come up with a solution. You know, I feel like it feels like we're touching each other's hearts and I'm, I'm ready to keep going. I'm ready to go on. I'm ready to see this through. Join me next time. This is Axis, over and out.